I get asked this question a lot and I think 70% of the time the person that's asking me this question and it is a question that comes from the unfaithful about 70% of the time they genuinely mean it and they are struggling to find a way to make amends make it right the question is Samuel how can I make it up to my spouse that I have cheated or had an affair or had an addiction or had several affairs how can I make it up to them what can I do and today I, I want to just kind of give you a quicker video that helps you understand a hard-hitting truth that took me a long time to grasp and that is this if you're an unfaithful spouse you'll never be able to make it up to your betrayed spouse or partner there's just never going to be a way that you're going to make it right. You're not ever going to be able to kind of check the boxes on a list that can make it up to them. Let me be real honest with you. You have devastated them. You have struck at the core of their identity, at the core of their self-esteem. Your choices have affected the way this, that they see themselves, the way that they see you, the way that they see God or divinity or higher beings, the way that they see humanity, the way that they see their children and other people's children. You have affected and altered the way that they see not just themselves but what they're capable of. You've changed the way that they sleep, the way that they eat, whether or not they eat, where they can eat. Please understand, I'm not trying to take you and rake you unfaithfuls over the coal. I'm trying to help you understand that you have altered them as a person. Yes, they can heal. Will they ever be the same again? No. Can they be better? I'm not going to answer that because I don't want you as an unfaithful to use that against them. There is going to be a process to their recovery, but you cannot ever make this up to them. You can't ever just make it go away. You can't make it right. And so you would say, well, Samuel, this is not a very hopeful video. What are we left to do? Well, let me give you a few things that you can do to not make it up to them, but that you can make amends to them with. The first thing that you can do is live a life that communicates to them what you have done to them as best you're able to see and that expresses empathy and compassion and patience with them. While you can't make it up to them, you can live in such a way that shows that you are either in touch with the consequences of your actions that they are dealing with or that you are striving to get in touch with what your consequences have or what your choices have done to them and the consequences that they are having to live out. What you can also do is to make it really gut street level frank is be an incredible human being to them. Be someone that works hard not because you're trying to please them, but because it's the right thing to do. Notice the things that, and if you're early on, it's a little bit tougher. If you maybe are six months, a year or so down the road, it's a little bit easier, even further. Find what helps them cope in life. For Samantha, I know that right now in our busy life, she doesn't like to cook. In fact, it's really tough for her to do a lot of cooking right now because her job is really putting a lot of challenges on her. So I have been cooking a lot. I've always been able to cook, but I have ramped it up over the last few months and I've made some pretty fantastic dishes, let me tell you. And I've really kind of put a lot of time into learning how to cook and recipes and studying some stuff. And it just, in, in I'll say it this way, it really ministers to her heart and her soul. The fact that I will make this big dinner for her and the kids and I'll clean up and do that just it's a it's a message it's a love language if you want to use that terminology that really hits her 
in the fields, if you will. But I just want to tell you, I'm not thinking that all of my hard work and labor and all this stuff is making it right or that I've made up for it. I just know who I've been. I know what I'm capable of being. And so I'm trying to really hit her heart in the fields. I'm trying to really minister to her in such a way where she feels loved. I'm not trying to have this, you know, pendulum of, man, I've, I cheated and I did all this and I'm just constantly trying. No, no, no. We're 15 years down the road. There's a freedom and there's a, a grace that's far different than what a lot of you are facing right now. So instead of trying to make it right, maybe it's going deeper into understanding what makes your spouse tick. I don't know if it's a meal. I don't know if it's something around the house. I don't know if it's a love language or some communication or maybe doing some pretty deliberate recovery work. But there is something that you can do. While you can't make up for it, you can live in such a way that it's evident that you are aware or you're becoming more and more self-aware for what your choices have done to your spouse. And so when you are aware of how you've hurt them and how you've altered their life, you're going to communicate a certain way. You're going to go the extra mile in ways as practical as maybe how you care for your home, how you care for their needs. If you are at the point where you're being physically intimate, you're going to put some time and some attention into it not just kind of haphazardly or flippantly engage in just kind of physical intimacy and just think, ah, we're good now. No, there is a laborious desire to minister to their heart. I don't mean that in a religious connotation. I just mean you are desiring to get into their heart and love it, repair it, heal it, care for it. If they, the betrayed, were to put their heart into your hands, it's probably pretty messy. It's probably pretty scarred. It's probably broken in several chambers. It's still beating, but it's there. How would you care for it? How are you caring for that heart? Are you just kind of like, hey, I'll put it over there? Are you trying to do everything that you can to hold it together, to try and heal it, to try and love it, to take it everywhere you go is more important than anything else that you are engaging in life? How in touch are you with their pain and hurt? Because while you can't ever make it up to them, your life can be a display of incredible humility and love. Infidelity is not loving your spouse. But you do have a choice on how you show love after that infidelity has happened. And I just want to tell you, if you truly are wanting to love your spouse and care for their heart, there's going to be effort. There's going to be action. It's not about words. It's about action. There's going to be a desire to get involved with their recovery as well as to get involved in your own recovery. You can't make it up to them, but you can be someone who works so hard to heal yourself so that you can be a better human being to your spouse or partner, to your kids, to all the people in your life. You can live in such a way where your spouse will say, you know, and Samantha says this, okay? She will say, you know, he was in blankety blank for about 10, 12 years. And then we had this crisis and now he's a totally different person. When I get tired, when I get grumpy, exhausted, when I am hungry, yeah, I can still, yeah, we'll leave it at that. But I have labored and am still laboring to be a man that she loves and trusts and wants to be with the rest of her life. If you're earlier on in recovery, anywhere from a week or two to, you know, three years, it's far different. But it is possible for you to 
engage in behavior and activity that displays a heart of humility and compassion and awareness for what you've done to them. And while you can't make it right, you can make it better. But the choice is yours. How diligent, how hard are you working to repair the damage that you have done? Now I know. Well, Samuel, he or she won't let me. I'm trying. I know. I know. But this is a process, and this is going to take time. You can only do what they allow you to do. And if they're not letting you do anything right now, well, then work on you so that if they give you another chance, they will encounter a new you, a healed you, a restored you, a brave you, a courageous, compassionate, empathetic, patient you. And they'll be like, well, wait a minute. Hold on. I was willing to be done, but now I'm seeing some things that I haven't seen before, and it's giving me hope. And so as they continue to see that the change is real, the change is true, the change is not just this moment, you're not just sorry you got caught, you're sorry for the person that you were, they may be open to giving you another chance. You cannot make it up to them, but you can live in such a way that your life displays an awareness for who you were who you are now, and who you want to be.